Let's talk about this jobs plan that came out yesterday. Very ambitious, as I said, 270 different points in this, how the government hopes to grow jobs, 100,000 over the next four years. Do you think it can deliver on its promises? Oh, well, I mean, to deliver on the total promise would be, you know, I don't think it's, it's achievable at this moment. But in fairness, uh, <clears throat> I think that there's some very good ideas in there. There's some excellent ideas, and they should be encouraged to keep trying to come up with ideas that are going to do something there. Uh, I think the problem is that people are cynical about it because uh, the, the usual cliche, we've heard it all before, but no matter, what there is, no matter what's going to be done, we've always heard it all before. And we must say that, that I, I believe that, that some of the, inst- the initiatives there are extremely good and hopefully they can carry them out. The thing is, how quick can they do it? And the problem is that report after report and various things that are going to happen, you know, it needs to happen and it needs to happen urgently, but it's not the panacea for all our ills. Uh, but th- there are some good parts in this, as you said. The state guarantees seventy-five percent of loans to businesses with the banks the way they have been in the last couple of years. Uh, do you think now that there are people out there who are going to expand their businesses with that little bit of financial help that perhaps the bank wouldn't have given them? I think that can happen, but we have to go back to reality. You know, and the reality is that in the domestic economy, you've just heard the headline in the news: seventy-nine percent of people are cutting back. Because the new poor in Ireland are the middle class, who are the people who actually fuel the economy. Uh, and that's a fact. So they're cutting back. And that impact on business has been ferocious. So on the one hand, while we're saying that, what's not widely known out there by the general public is that businesses have suffered greatly in the last number of years. And all of the jobs, most of our jobs, have been lost through non-competitiveness. For example, we did deals for, uh, on behalf of workers that were supposed to be in their best interest. They were never were in their best interest because they made the country uncompetitive. And those jobs were inevitably going to be lost, and that's what's happened there. But within, within the domestic economy, for example, a lot of businesses got into trouble, we say, with the snow and all last year, where they got into cash flow problems. And it's not widely known that the revenue charged now to people who have been behind on those payments, 10% interest. Uh, and that's our own state, are charging its own business people. So it's very hard to square the fact that our own state would charge our own business people 10% for being late with a payment when we're screaming about paying too much for, for borrowing money on the, on the markets, like 6 and 7%, we're charging 10 And in the meantime, we're incentivizing foreigners to come in here, which I fully support. But that draconian measure on business is actually costing people jobs. How many people would have been affected by that, Liam? I know that uh, it's not fair to be charging people 10% when they had a cash flow problem and that's yeah. why the revenue didn't get their money exactly. in time. But like, does it, have you complained to revenue over that? Did you try I have raise written, the case? I have written myself because I'm part of a group called EAR which is trying to do some, some work on, on rates. I have written, and this is what would infuriate me, I have written to... Everybody uh, in Cabinet, I've written to Taoiseachs of the, the lot, and I've done it with previous governments, and most of the time you never, ever get a reply. Now, I'm not saying this to be boastful. I started with four staff. I had 400 staff a couple of years ago. We're down to three now, but we're still holding, we're still holding three, and I think that's good, and I'm pretty proud of the fact that we're doing it. But I didn't get the courtesy of a reply from our own government ministers. For example, Minister Phil Hogan, who's responsible for the rates area and the whole council area, hasn't responded to about five or six different emails. Now, I don't expect them to get up in the morning and answer me all the time, but I was writing on behalf of a lot of people who are in business who find it very difficult to cope with those situations. And the reality is, never mind the business people, just think about it. If they can't pay the rates and they've been charged draconian interest rates on, in terms of late payment, um, that means that people will lose their jobs and they go on to social welfare and they cost everybody more money. And the other thing to remember about that is that uh, I believe that there should have been a penalty for people, because I started in business and I wound up against the black economy for a lot of my life in business. And um, I believe there should be a penalty for, for, for not kind of, kind of, kind of being conforming. Yeah. But to charge 10% interest at this point in time is costing jobs. Never mind the business, it's costing jobs. Tell me about, the, ra- tell me about the rates, because I mean, I was going through this 270-point um, document mm-hmm. yesterday. There doesn't seem to be too much of a reference to addressing the issue no, of but rates. The, but you see, Jonathan, the problem is that... <clears throat> I'm saying this with the greatest respect. I respect a lot of politicians. I wouldn't put myself forward to be a politician. Besides, I'm unelectable. But if I did, uh, from my point of view, I, I just feel that it's, it's, I, I admire them for doing that. But the problem is that the skill sets that you need to get you to be a politician, to be elected, are not the skill sets required for running a business or a country. And if you look across the board, a lot of the people that are there, they don't have the, the, the life's experiences of looking at some of these issues to, to try and resolve them. And I think that is a big gap that we have and leadership is required. <clears throat> and if we're going to get leadership, <clears throat> we have to make unravel a lot of things that are out there. 
And together with the social partnership arrangements and benchmarking, these were supposed to be for the good of the people. They actually wound up the opposite, the, the, in the opposite situation. <clears throat> they now have come to, not to the benefit of the people, but they're now a drag on the people themselves. So we need to make decisions that can unravel things. But in terms of the local authority rates, for example, I run three businesses in County Wexford, which has taken me a long time to build up on one in Kilkenny. My rates bill for, the, for, for those three places are €500,000 a year. Now, that is a draconian amount. And <clears throat> under the old rate system, that was based on turnover and based on the, uh, I won't bore the people with the details, but the va- based on the vacant lettable value of a premises. Right. That's all completely changed, but the rate situation hasn't. And in the meantime, we're looking at reports saying that there's a 500 million euro uh, rate sa- uh, savings available in rates. Now, that has never been implemented. That report has been sitting on the minister's desk for a couple of years. That is costing jobs in the, in the, in the domestic economy. Okay. That means that people lose their jobs because this is not resolved. And we're not moving. We're talking about all the things we're going to do. But it's like, you know, he lived beneath the sun, he passed beneath the moon, he lived the life we're going to do and died with nothing done. It's just, it's, we're just not getting it done on time. And I just believe that if we could only move much more quickly on all areas and the things that we can unravel and unravel them, we could set the, the, the domestic economy freer at least and, and, and certainly you could stop that 79%. Old because that's, be, that's because people are out of work. Okay, Liam Griffin, stay on the line with us. Uh, we're talking to Liam Griffin, hotelier and businessman in Wexford on News Talk Lunchtime. But I want to bring in Claire Nash, the owner of Nash 19 Restaurant in Cork City Centre. Claire, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Jonathan. What would you think about this rates issue? There doesn't seem to be too much uh, mention of it in the jobs plan. How much of a burden is it for business? Oh, it's a huge burden. I mean, it's something that I'm actually PRO of Cork Business Association also, and every year we lobby, chamber lobbies, the Irish Hotel Federation, we all lobby our local council to um, either stagnate and certainly in the last number of years to reduce rates. Like, it is just a crippling um, fee and extra, um, you know, something extra that you have to find every year, especially for hotel, you know, people that have larger um, larger square footage. Um, here in the city, we um, we actually didn't have any rates increase last year and we are lobbying this year for a certainly 1% drop if if not two. Now, we understand that we need the rates and, you know, like everyone's... But the money, the money is down. put to good use. It's, it's to fund the local authority. Yeah, yeah, it is to fund the local authority and local authorities are down in, you know, in central funding. So, of course, they have to get it. But also another huge area that local authorities are down in is the development um, rate because development has totally ground, you know, ground to a halt, especially in Cork. I mean, there's only a couple of projects um, actually started in the last 12 months. But, you know, it's a bit of a chicken and egg, isn't it? You know, I mean, we have to pay rates to keep the to keep the services going. But they certainly, like the government, haven't looked at rates. And once again, they're rolling out this jobs initiative. Rates hasn't been dealt with. They upward only um, rent doesn't seem to have been dealt with. I haven't studied it in total detail now, Jonathan. I've been... Well, I've been, try- no, I've been, try- I've been trying to find it myself and I've been on to the Department of the Environment to try and find out if they can tell me if there's anything for uh, rates, uh, specifically for rates, no, and there doesn't seem so. to be anything in it. Uh, Claire, can I just... Something that Sean O'Reardon was writing about in this morning's Irish Examiner, I know it's not uh, your direct area, but yes. Cork County Council, their rates gathering exercise, they collected 95.7 million euro in rates last year. Now, that was 16 million euro more than 2006. So they're pulling more in, in rates now than they were than they at the height of the boom. I mean, can you understand why they would be doing that and not reducing the rates so that perhaps you and people like Liam could go out and create jobs? Well, I suppose why, why their rates might have increased, you know, you'll probably find that there's one or two cases of new industry after starting and that that would very much just clear that increase very quickly. But having said that, I know in Cork City um, the rates that you can negotiate your rates over a 12-month period and you certainly can go one-on-one to the council now. Um, I'm sure it's the same at Martin Reardon out in the county that you can go face-to-face with the rates collector and actually knock out a deal. But I mean, we have so many other things to be doing, you know, and just like basically trying to keep your businesses going and trying to keep your regeneration pink and cap on, you know, about what you're going to do next or what, you know, what feather are you going to pull out of your cap next. It's really, it's crazy that they haven't come to us with some greater scheme. Uh, Liam, you're saying it's half a million a year for your three businesses. If they reduce that even by, uh, look, 50 grand oh. or, or 100,000, yeah. what, what would that mean for potential for job creation for your company? Well, this is a simple sum. We have a labour cost. We have all our various costs. We have to cut our costs. We have people on three-day weeks. That's normal this time of the year. But we also have people who are laid off for a period of time. There's no question about that. It's, everyone just seems to think that it's rates about business. It costs people jobs. But my problem is this, and I think it's a problem for the state. 
<clears throat> we have education cuts. We have all sorts of various cuts at the moment. If you take the health budget, as 89% of the money is going back on wages. Like, we can't afford to carry that in business. We have to keep our wages, our wage, our wages down. And we have a, a ridiculous system which has happened whereby people are allowed to voluntarily will say, go and take, uh, take redundancy or whatever and leave their jobs. And I don't blame the people for doing that. They were allowed to do that. But the deal that was negotiated by, uh, at the very top is a flawed deal. So how much, how much is the wage cost of the total local authority all over the country? How many duplications have we across local authorities? Well, they're, they're, to be fair, they've, tried to, they've tried to address mm-hmm. some of that because they've you know, gotten rid of the local uh, enterprise boards, centralising that. So there is some, some positive movement in that again. That, you know, so let's not knock the government. No, no, no. Way. Listen, anything that they do well, let's say we give them credit. We're trying to look at something differently. And I agree, and I've, I've already said at the top of this that I, I support fully what they're trying to do. But we have built-in structures and systems through social partnership and benchmarking that are actually crippling the country. And that the very people who are designed to help, they're crippling them. And they're putting those people, they're putting those people out of work and reducing their income. For example, you just take at the top of the civil service and take the top of the government. We can take four grand off of somebody who is a former minister, and we can't take any more because he's contracted. But we can take money off of people's private pensions and don't have a say in it. We can take social part. We can bring in a social charge and put it on top of all of the various citizens who can't afford it. But we have contracts for other people. So we're living in a parallel universe within the state, and that needs to be unravelled and sorted out. And with respect, the trade union movement has done a great disservice to its members over the last number of years because they've been promising a utopia, and unfortunately they got what they wish for, but now it's hurting their ordinary members, not their top members, who are very highly paid. That's hurting them greatly. So we have a so, labour uh, cost what, what, what are you saying? What are you saying, Liam? You're, you're talking about a labour cost problem. You're, you're bringing in a wider issue there. So what, what are you telling the well, government to do? I a wider issue because it's part of the problem. Look, at the problem in this place is not one problem. We don't have one problem. We have thousands of problems. We have created a dysfunctional state because we put in structures and systems into it that are crippling everybody. They're crippling most people in Middle Ireland. They're not crippling people at the very top, let me tell you. Well, what I'm saying is that it's when we sat down to do benchmarking, all the people sitting around the table wound up doing very well for themselves. All the leaders at the top sat down and did very well for themselves. And uh, ostensibly then, they sold the, 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 the pup, which it was at the end of the day, because it didn't go well, and it's, cause it has, it's, it's broken, on the basis that people were going to do much better themselves. But now it's coming home to roost. So, like, the whole system of, 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 of running the country has been done in a system that is not that is flawed. It needs to now be unravelled because the labour cost within the state. For example, what is the labour cost? Does anybody know? This is a fundamental question. What's the labour cost of running councils throughout the entire country, councils and so forth? And if to say the minister got on his desk three years ago, a document says there's 500 million euros of a saving to be made, that means that people are paying 500 million too much. So many people would that imply? If we're paying 500 million too much and that was put back into the economy, how many more people would that imply? And the other thing is then, and uh, uh, Mr. Honahan said it last week, if everybody in the public sector had been asked to take a small, a small decrease across the board and not be hit with all the other levies, it might have solved it. But what we did, we came up with a solution whereby we said, you can all go in redundancy and everybody else stays on the same pay. No, yeah. uh, never mind me. What about you, your sister, your brother, your, your aunt who wants to go to hospital? It's a worry now. What about your child getting educated? We're well, upsetting the fundamentals of the whole state by bad governance. And I'm just saying that some of the people that are doing these things, they're not fit for purpose and they're not looking at the bigger picture. And finally, we have to stay competitive as a nation. What is the point of people sitting around the table making us sound competitive? We were hurting our own citizens. We're only feeling it now. And yeah, we, but they, you're talking about historical problems there. I mean, and exactly, to be fair, to, to be be fair to the government, Liam. Jonathan, they need to be unravelled. If they're not unravelled, we'll still be talking about this and promising things and looking for fresh reports. Because if you can't do what we're supposed to do, you're, you're, you're hamstrung. It's like going out on a football field. If you don't give them the ball, they can't play. So you've got to make, make sense of the thing. And, and I, I honestly feel that we need to unravel it. And we need to do it quickly. And the government were elected to lead. And leadership is what required. And that takes good decisions. Okay. And if they don't, they will pay themselves. And so will the country. Claire, I just want to let I know you're obviously heading up yeah. to your lunchtime rush. But uh, last point from you before we move on. Well, certainly, Liam, I, you know, like I more than agree with you. But that has to concurrently be like we must be running in tandem with all all these new measures now that they've taken like you know the new business loans for small sector the executive incentive um you know the whole um food like the food producing area certainly that whole area of what is labor costing us and it has to be unraveled and i mean equally unravel what are the expenses costing us because if they're taking reductions in one hand i believe the expenses are increasing on the other but i do think that this is a welcome report that we must take and pluck bits out of it that suit our industries, we must work with it. And, OK, it's not all brand new. I mean, certainly the last government had initiated an awful lot of this, particularly in the food sector. But, you know, we have to run with what we're given now. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd certainly encourage that Kenny has vowed 
publish the full progress report every quarter. That would yep. be very interesting reading and it cannot be historic. It has to be every quarterly or else, you know, it's just the same thing again. Claire, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you going to do your lunchtime rush, Claire. Thank you very, very much, much Claire Nash of Nash Bye. 19 Restaurant. Bye. Liam, I, look, I, again, the, the point I was trying to make to you was that, you know, I you're going over... The, I just agree with the, the sentiments of, of just said there. I agree with that. We yeah. have to be positive and we have to take that and I embrace it. And I do. We've got to unravel the other stuff at the same time. How do, how quickly can we do that? Because, look, we have the Crow Party Agreement. We're do doing, the okay. government is saying they're working as fast as they can. There are reforms being delivered. Uh, you know, we are reducing Jonathan, the state wage bill. I mean, significantly. Jonathan, listen, the bottom line is this. There's no point in me telling you that, you know, if you hang me off a rope and I'm hanging off the side of a cliff, or I'm hanging off the side of a cliff and needing a rope, and you keep telling me you're going to get a report to get it done, you're going to go meet somebody, you're going to consult somebody, get me the bloody rope. We need leadership to get to unravel these things. Somebody needs to stand up and say, we're going to do the following. We have to do it. How come that every time we come up with some major stuff, it can't be done because of some serious issue or some serious contract that we're supposed to have? But how come we can put our hands in the citizens of Middle Ireland who are trying to pay their mortgages and say, hey, we're not giving you any say, we're taking it off of you, but we're not taking it off of them. That's an unequal society. It's not right. It's immoral. It shouldn't have happened. We should unravel it. And that needs leadership and courage. And that's what's required. And do you not think we're getting that? No, I don't. Not, not sufficiently. Not at all. And I just don't think the people are evil. I don't think the people who are leading this country are evil people. There's some very good people there. But they're playing to different agendas. If they're playing to, they're playing to the orchestra that suits some other people, they're not suiting the, the entire ordinary citizen of the state. Because if you go to pick one section of the society, you're actually obviously marginalising somebody else. So that's happening. And I, I'm not saying that. Look, I'd rather be talking to you about hurling. I'd rather be talking about football. I'd rather be talking about the rugby last week. But unfortunately, in my daily life, this is what we have to do. I'm giving you my opinion for what it's worth. Yep. And I give it honestly. And I've no political allegiance. I never had. All I want to do is the privilege to go to work, and I'm delighted to do that. And I'm doing it seven days a week, and I'm not complaining. But I just think we need leadership at the top to create the circumstances within our own country, rather than saying, yes, we should look abroad. Yes, we should look to get people in here. Yes, we should try and get every incentive we can. But hey, we're Irish too. Look at the local citizens. Look at the best economy. Look at rural Ireland. Look at what's happening. And sort that out.